Hey guys, just got done watching the UFC Benson Henderson Rising Up documentary. And it's okay, but it's nowhere as good as the Ronda Rousey one. And it's slightly disappointing, but it does have some benefits. Like, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. There's 12, there's 12 matches on the back, on the discs, if you can see right there. There's 12 there. And the best part about it is six of them are from WEC, which you can't buy on DVD. So it's worth it, really, to buy this for those matches. I mean, you probably could see them on some best of us, but if you want to see a certain thing, do you know what I mean? So it's a good one. So anyway, basically it starts out with Benson Henderson fighting Frankie Edgar in their first match where Benson Edgar wins the match for the lightweight UFC championship. And then it basically shows him going to train. And basically a lot of this documentary has him training and just kind of doing his training with his team. In one scene, he goes to a youth place where, you know, where teens can go and listen. And he's like the special guest there. But for the majority of this, which I didn't realise, was Benson Henderson is part Korean. I didn't know that. I had no idea that he was part Korean. And at the time, he was getting basically interviewed by Korean Times reporter Paul Lee. And basically, it just follows through that. Basically, the guy talking to him about his career and how he felt about this and what he wants to leave behind. And it's an interesting story because it starts off from there with him basically talking about when he was fighting in WEC and about how he lost the title to Anthony Pettis, who does that outstanding, crazy kick off the fence and kicks Ben Sanderson right there and knocks him out. What a kick. It was so amazing. That's probably one of the reasons we've actually got it in the new game, because of that. I mean, what a way to end the match. So, or I should say in the fight. So, basically, it goes from that to Benson being really depressed and feeling really down to then him talking about how his dad was a drunk and used to beat up on his mum at this youth place. And how he decided he didn't want to do any of that. He didn't want to be that type of person. And because the way his mum was such a, you know, such an amazing, determined woman who took care of them and made them basically the people they are now, it really, really has made him a dedicated and good person. Because he says that him and his brother were kind of, you know, they weren't the best of kids. But you can tell that their mother is a big influence on who they are today. You know, in a different sense to Ronda Rousey's mum, in the fact that she wasn't a judo expert, but she just took care of them the way only a mother could. One of the really, really, really funny but sad parts was where you find out that the WEC event, where he went against Anthony Pettis, which was a WEC 53, he, uh, he was fighting in Glendale, where he's from, his hometown. And uh, when Anthony Pettis knocks him out and they do the, like, the conference afterwards, you can tell he just wants to cry. And it's so sad. But at the same time, because his face goes like this, you, you want to laugh a bit, you know? Sounds bad, but you do. So we go on from there to basically him, his brother talking, Julius Henderson talking about his brother and about how he felt like he wanted to cry for him and, all this other stuff about his brother's an inspirational person. And one of the things I didn't like about this documentary, which I'm going to say right here before I continue, is more of it was on his mum, Song Henderson, and on Julius Henderson, then it was him. It was like they were being interviewed continuously, and I wanted to see more about him. So after that little bit where he loses the WEC and them talking about that, it then goes to basically his rise through the, through the UFC, but on his way to the lightweight title, basically. So you get him going against... Let's have a look. You get him going against Mark 
Bokek. And then after that, it's Jim Miller, who basically, if he, if uh, Benson Henson had lost to Jim Miller, he would have then basically got the title shot. Jim Miller, this is. But he didn't. So then they had UFC on Fox where he went against Clay Guida. I always say his name wrong. Clay Guida. And he beat Clay Guida, so he got the title shot. And because he got the title shot, he ended up beating Frankie. But the one problem with this documentary is when it shows the fights with him and Frankie, it shows it more on Benson's side. Which first I'd like to have seen kind of like a fair thing. Like, you know, like Frankie hitting him in the face. Then Benson hitting him back. And, you know, not obviously the same shot. But it would have been great to see more even. Because you would have thought, wow, this was a fight. But he really does crack Frankie open in the face. Which I thought was pretty cool. Um, so basically he gets the fight. And then he gets, then he shows Benson at the ball game, basically. Throwing uh, baseball. And he signs one. And that's that, basically. So then you get another you get another shot of him training and talking about his life and about how he wants to be the best and so forth. So the it's a great, it's not a documentary, but it's one of those that you you'd think you'd see on TV for free. You won't go out your way to like go out and buy. You feel like it should be a part of a extra on a DVD possibly. So basically, it shows. Another thing it shows is him and his teammates, and the ones that have never had a fight, they go to this place where basically it's not professional, it's more like amateurish, but it's on, like the stepping stone, if you know what I mean, for them. And he supports them, and you kind of see him fighting. It's pretty good to know that it's, there's more in depth to it than him just turning up, him just doing what he needs to do and leave. The fact that he helps them and they help him, it's what real teamwork's about, and I like seeing that. And a bit where it goes on about how proud he is of them and everything is an amazing thing to hear and watch. So then there's like this convention they go to, uh, like a UFC convention for MMA fighters. Never heard of it, but I think it's a UFC convention. UV Fitness or something. I don't know. But Benson's there, and then you've got other fighters there, and it looks like a really cool place to go. I'm going to check it out and see if I can ever get to go to one of these events because I'd love to meet some MMA fighters because I'm a big MMA fan, mixed martial arts. Not only did I train in it, but I've watched it for years. Now I've got like probably 600 uh, MMA events on DVD, but that doesn't matter. The point is, so it's pretty good because you see them going around, you see them getting pictures of people signing things, the usual stuff. And there's this one bloke that tells him that his girlfriend's obsessed with his mother, with Ben Sensen's mother. And she, because she found out she was upset about him losing the belt, you know, and losing, like, the title or something like that. But she, his girlfriend always asks this guy who's getting the thing signed by Benson how his mother's doing. And I was just sitting there going, why would we really care about this? So then he goes against Frankie Edgar again. And basically the result is obviously the same. He wins again. But the problem I had with these was they were by decision. A real match, a real fight doesn't end in a decision. And don't get me wrong, I understand the rules because, you know. But I think when you're a champ, you prove your dominance, obviously, by knocking someone out or submitting them or whatnot. I think that's the ultimate way. But decisions come and go, don't they? So... So Paul Lee from the Korea Times basically asked him more about what is his final views. And he says, well, I want to be the best. If Anderson Silva beats a guy 18 times and keeps the belt, I want to do it 19 times. Well, sadly, Benson Henderson, after this, went against Anthony Pettis again in the UFC and he lost the belt again. So Anthony Pettis seems to be the guy who can, you know, beat him. So, right at the end, you have, you have Song Henderson, his mother, talking. And because she's got a bit of an accent, they obviously put subtitles there because it can be a bit hard. And it basically says she told him she wanted him to do something like an office job. And he said he couldn't do that because that wasn't the type of person he was. 
and she was worried about him becoming a fighter or becoming somebody like a policeman because it would be difficult for him. You know, not because he'd be bad or because he'd suffer for it, but because you never know, someone can attack you, you might get shot, you might get stabbed or so forth, if you know what I'm saying. So, basically, it ends there with these with pictures of him, uh, with his family, and with his, uh, like, Captain America mask and that on, which was nice. But the one thing I got from this was that, was that uh, Benson Henderson was a family man, and that his family came first, and that he he always lived, he kind of lives in his mum's kind of view of the fact that if his mum can do it, or she believes it, then he will. And that is, in my view, that is healthy, and at the same time, not. Now, I think it's a good bloke, and I think it's a good story, a good documentary to a degree, but the point of this I mentioned was, it was actually a little bit boring. Not because Benson Henson's boring, but because everything he does is, like, he goes training, he helps people, he fights, he has a family, but there's nothing to it. All you hear is Julius Henderson talking really about how his brother's this and he's inspired him and how he looks up to him, not because he's a, not because he's a champion, but because he, the man he is. And you're like, okay. So, yeah, I I liked it, but... It's, it was nowhere as good as the Ronda Rousey one. If I had to choose one to point the player to show people, so far it'd be the Ronda Rousey one because that one was really in-depth and I felt like they didn't go enough into like his father leaving and stuff. I know they shouldn't, they shouldn't really pride in that, really. But when he was telling the kids, I would have liked to have heard more about it, but you don't. But I like the whole idea of... Uh, the Career Times is interviewing him, and it's kind of showing his career while they're doing it. I thought that was kind of good. I thought it was quite a good effect, to be honest. But yeah, overall, I'd give it a 3.5 for the reasons I've stated. It's not a bad documentary. It's slightly it's slightly dull because there, nothing really goes on in it. And the scenes in it of the fights, the fights take up more of the documentary and his brother and his mum than he does. So I kind of didn't like that because in the Ronda Rousey one, you kind of felt like she was in nearly every shot and she was the dominant one in the in the film, you know, in the documentary. But Benson isn't. He feels like a side character. So anyway, it's, it's all right. I'll give it a 3.5. I did say that, I hope. A 3.5 because it was decent, but it wasn't anything special. Uh, the best part of it, like I said, for the DVD day, was obviously the events, the WEC events, because you can't get them on DVD unless you get them pirated. So definitely get if you want the WEC events because they're worth it. Or even get if you're a big fan of Benson Henderson. I, I can admit that technically I'm not a big fan of his, but then I've never watched really a lot of his matches, just the matches, a lot of his fights. I've only watched the ones like recently, like Frankie Edgar and that, and I'm going to check out the WEC ones sometime soon. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this review. As always, if you did, give it a thumbs up. And please subscribe if you haven't. And have a lovely, lovely day. Yeah.